You are tuned into the Dr. Tina Show with Dr. Tina Moore. For more, visit drtina.com. On this episode of the Dr. Tina Show, I am talking muscle as medicine. This episode is a long time coming and many of you have asked for it. You know I love this topic. I talk about it all the time over on the socials. And today I'm going to make an argument as to why I believe wholeheartedly that as a human being, if you want to age without chronic degenerative illnesses, chronic pain, depression, and dementia, amongst other things, then strength training is a non-negotiable. Now, first off, I'm going to tell you to go back and listen to several of my episodes that I'll link in the show notes, one with coach Robert Linkle, one with coach Tony Gracia, and we dive into those episodes as to how to get started. We're not going to talk about that today. I can't tell you how to strength train. You have to go get taught how to strength train. And I'll say this, my job for over a decade was putting people's joints back together in a regenerative medicine practice, a very busy one. And if you go out gunning to lift weights, a couple of things are potentially going to happen if you don't actually hire help. Now, I realize that this might be out of some people's budget, so find a way. There might be an online program. I have a great one that Coach Robert put together that I'll link in the show notes. Very inexpensive program to get you started at home with just a few small pieces of equipment. But most importantly, this is a skill. And if you don't learn the skill appropriately, the potential for getting hurt is high. So that's problem number one. I've done it to myself. I continue to do it to myself when I'm left to my own devices. So even somebody as well-seasoned as I am, I still hurt myself if I don't follow a program. Number two, you won't get anywhere. You won't get very far very fast. Now, initially, you'll get great gains. Everybody does. When you go from nothing to something with strength training, everybody gets great gains in the beginning. So they start to build muscle. They start to lose weight. They feel great. That's awesome. But you will plateau, which is very frustrating. And without a good program that's been written up for you by somebody else, or potentially if you know how to program your own workouts, that's awesome, you won't get very far in the long run. And then number three, you'll get bored or you'll overdo it or one, you know, one of a myriad of issues will pop up or really you just won't push yourself hard enough. That's a pretty common one. I don't push myself nearly as hard as when I've got my coach right in front of me or on a Zoom call. So I'll leave it at that. And I'm going to go through some physiologic reasons why you need muscle mass. So the end all be all here and it's a longer discussion than I have time to totally get into. But the end all be all here is sarcopenia. As we age, we naturally become more insulin and carb resistant. So we become more carbohydrate intolerant by nature of aging. There is a mechanism here called inflammaging where we become more inflamed as we age. It's a natural part of aging. And the bulk of my patients, as they pass their 80th birthday, became diabetic to some degree or another. Didn't matter how lean they were, if they didn't have much muscle mass, they were in big trouble. So inflammaging leads to this vicious cycle where you start to atrophy your muscle, you start to lose your muscle mass. This atrophy, this sarcopenia actually starts in your 30s, as does the carbohydrate intolerance, if you really want to get technical. And it progresses pretty rapidly as we age. By the time you get to 70 years old, you've lost double what you lost in your 30s and 40s. So in your 30s and 40s, a loss of up to 8% per decade until you reach that older age of 70s and 80s where the loss nearly doubles. And remember this, the heart is a muscle as well. And a person in their 70s may have up to 30% fewer heart cells than they did when they were younger. So now we get to sarcopenia. What is sarcopenia? That is muscle wasting. It's Greek for poverty of the flesh. And this is a natural phenomenon that occurs sort of as a chicken and egg. So we've got the inflammation. Now, say you're not elderly and you're not dealing with inflammaging, you're still potentially dealing with inflammation because 94% of Americans in the latest data shows 94% of US adults have metabolic dysfunction. And we've talked at length, so go back and listen to my other podcast episodes because I've talked at length about that subject, what it is, what to do about it. And the key to sorting it out is making sure you're eating nutritionally dense foods, lots of animal protein is my preference, and preferably beef or a ruminant animal, and lifting weights. 
and getting enough sleep, getting enough sunshine and not stressing the hell out. That's basically the key to keeping your metabolism at its best. But this sarcopenia, this muscle wasting process really ramps up when people are exposed to acute illnesses like COVID or influenza. And it will also ramp up in the face of chronic illnesses such as cancer. And so we don't want to be losing our muscle. There's some speculation out there and the percentages differ depending on what I've read. But basically what I've learned and what I've shared with my patients is that if you lose 10% of your body mass, especially during an acute injury or acute illness, or you know whether it's infectious or you got burned or whatever it is, that's the kiss of death. So once somebody hits that 10% body weight loss, say you're in the throes of COVID and you drop a, you know, a bundle of weight pretty fast, you can guarantee a bunch of that is muscle. And that's really the beginning of a severe decline. And I get much more concerned when patients are losing weight quickly in the face of illness, whether it be acute or chronic. We don't want that happening. That's not a good sign. So all right, so how we go into our 30s and 40s and later years really matters, right? So if we're losing so much muscle mass automatically just by the process of aging naturally, you would assume that we would want to go into those years with significant muscle mass. Now, I didn't do this. I went in as skinny as humanly possible, and I ended up in my later 30s and early, right around 40 is when I got serious about strength training because I was like, this is not a good look. Skinny, wh- white girl syndrome is also known as osteoporosis, right? Or osteoporosis is better known around medical school as skinny white girl syndrome. So if you're a skinny Caucasian female, I guarantee you're going to have osteoporosis if you're not strength training. So there you go. There's that. I mean, that's just a gimme. I don't know a single Caucasian patient who had fair eyes and fair skin, who was thin, who was elderly, who didn't have severe osteoporosis. It's not a good thing. Now, there's different reasons for it, and I'm not going to get into that here, but we can offset a lot of this by having muscle mass. As we get older, it's much harder to put on muscle mass because we don't have the androgens or testosterone levels that we once did, so it's harder to build. So that's why I say this is non-negotiable. I'm not just trying to build muscle so I can have a nice physique that looks nice in a bikini. I'm building muscle because I am literally fighting the hands of time daily. I mean, if I take even just a few weeks off because of an injury or I'm busy or I'm stressed out, I lose so much strength and muscle mass so quickly. And it's much more profound than it was when I was even 40. And it was much easier to build muscle and lose fat when I was in my 40s, early 40s. I'm still in my 40s. I'm in my late 40s now. So you get my drift. This is us against the hands of time where it's like climbing up a sand dune that keeps the sand just keeps spilling underneath you and you're not really getting very far, very fast. That's kind of the muscle aging game, if the way that I look at it. This matters because your baseline fitness levels and your baseline muscle mass really counts in any sort of health crisis. And so if we're walking into cancer or we're walking into an acute or chronic illness, we want to make sure we have absolutely as much muscle mass on our body as we can. And ladies out there, you're not going to get bulky, especially if you're 40 or above, you're really not going to get bulky. The only time I ever get bulky is when I'm being a little carbohydrate piggy. And when I'm pigging out on refined carbs and I'm pigging out on chips and I'm pigging out on, even if they're healthy, even if they're organic, they're still freaking refined carbs. <laughs> and if I'm munching on them and I'm lifting, I tend to get bulky, but that's not what happens for most people. All right. Deconditioning and lack of strength training is at the core of sarcopenia. So let's talk about our young people for a minute. I am, I mean... I, how do I put this? I went to the state fair the other day and I'm in Oregon and I walked around for several hours with my husband and I was not trying to judge anybody, but I gauge people based on their vitality. I can look at somebody and measure their vitality like that. I mean, I just look at them and I'm like, oh, they've got high vitality or low vitality or whatever. And I can tell a lot by just looking at a person. I can tell by the structure and integrity of their skin, even without touching them, because I've touched so many thousands of patients in my career. I may my job was as a hands-on doctor. I did musculoskeletal medicine. So most doctors don't touch their patients aside from maybe a stethoscope or whatnot. Like I was, I had my hands on my patients. I know what their tissues feel like. And I can tell just by looking at someone what their tissue integrity is going to be. Now that I've learned about fourth phase water, structured water, I can tell whether their water structured just by looking at them. 
If it's not, they look like they're melting off their bones, whether they're thin or obese. And I can pretty much tell you what their labs are going to look like just by first glance. And I, I know people want to argue with me about this, but it's kind of like, how do I put it? You know, if any of you who know how to communicate with animals, right, like I can talk to dogs. So when I have people say, oh, you know, they poo-poo it or they say, oh, what's your deal with dogs? It's like, well, just because you can't talk to dogs doesn't, is not my problem, <laughs> right? That's not my problem. Just because I can and you can't. But just because I can and they can't look at someone, doctors want to argue with me about this. I'm, I don't think that everybody goes into medical school and automatically comes out a healer, by the way, you guys. I have a theory. Some of us are born healers and we go through life as healers. And a lot of us deal with depression and anxiety as young people. And we would have been healers in our village if we were, you know, in a different place and time. And uh, we would have been the medicine women or men. We would have been the witches. We would have been the herbalists out in the forest. And a lot of people that go through medical school, clearly, apparently, by this whole COVID fiasco that's gone on the past few years and the massive brainwashing that I've watched in the majority of my colleagues, um, they didn't come to school as healers. They weren't natural born healers. They just went to school, memorized a bunch of shit and came out and regurgitated it. That's not the same thing. And so I say this as a healer, I can look at someone and tell you generally, uh, to be honest with you, I can tell you what's wrong with them. And I can definitely tell you what their labs are going to look like. So I'm at the fair and man, all I had to say to my husband as we left was humans are a disaster. This is a disaster. This is beyond... Even I knew things were a hot, hot mess years before COVID hit, but this pandemic has really taken its toll. And I know the fair isn't the best place to do it, but I went to a Nine Inch Nails concert a few days later. I've been to the mall. I've been downtown. And I'm telling you, it's a disaster. Human health is a complete disaster right now. And I don't have a solution for you guys. I'm not here to fix it. I'm not here to save everyone. I'm here to help those who are going to survive the zombie apocalypse. They plan on it. They planned on it for a long time. They probably planned on it before COVID hit. If you feel like you're in that camp, I'm here for you. If not, I don't know what to tell you, except get your shit together now. And I say that with absolute love. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't take my time doing this. This is not a get rich quick scheme. I don't the amount of work that goes into content creation is enormous and often thankless and very often met with so much vitriol and venom and pushback. I do this because I genuinely want to see humans win and we are in a disaster right now. So it starts with this deconditioning and lack of muscle mass. And this is happening to our kids. It's in our teens. It's in our young people. It's in our adults. It's in our geriatric population or our master's group, I will call them. Um, this is a mess. And I was recently in Boise, Idaho. And I noticed similarly to when I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona, a whole lot of really healthy looking middle-aged folks. That is not something you find anywhere in Oregon, maybe Eastern Oregon, maybe certain parts. But in most cases, my age group is a complete and total disaster. It's like diabetes and alcoholism walking everywhere and massive carbohydrate addiction. And I, again, I'm not judging. It's just like, whoa, I don't even know where to start with this. So we start with muscle. The reason we start with muscle and nothing else is because forget what you're eating, forget how you're sleeping, forget all of it. You can change all that. You can try. A lot of people come to me and say, I've been listening to you since day one of this pandemic and I've lost a hundred pounds and they send me awesome before and after photos and I'm so stoked for them. And then I say, are you strength training? And they go, no. And I'm like, what the heck? Like that was number one. <laughs> That's where you start. I know it's hard. That's the point, right? It's a whole lot easier than calorie restriction. Start with strength training. The reason being is you will automatically go to bed on time because you'll be tired. You will drink more water because you just are inclined to. You're drawn to it. You will choose better foods because you didn't work that hard to build that booty to go eat a bunch of junk that isn't going to fuel that booty. So you start eating for fuel. You start eating to fuel that muscle. The strength gains are phenomenal for your body they're also better even yet for your brain. And what I mean by that is your cognition turns on, your lights turn on, your instincts turn on, your libido turns on. All of a sudden you realize, I hate my fucking job. I don't actually like my spouse or my partner. This kid is driving me nuts. And your lights turn on and you start taking measures to right the ship. 
I'm not saying go quit your job or divorce your partner, or kick your kid out. I'm just saying we have to have our lights on if we're going to navigate this, especially right now. We are walking headlong. We are not even walking headlong anymore. We are in the midst of absolute tyranny on this planet, on a global scale. And if your lights aren't on, if you're drinking too much, if you're drowning your sorrows in carbohydrates and garbage food and alcohol and weed and all of the above, you're going to be in for a rude awakening in a few months to years when the shit really hits the fan. So let's all be cognizant of what's happening around us and have our best foot forward and our best instincts turned on so that we can do what's best for ourselves and our families as we walk through this. All right, there's my rant. <laughs> no episode is complete without my rant, right? Deconditioning and lack of strength starts occurring early on in age. And we've been taught as a society, especially in the 80s, cardio bunnies, right? Everyone do cardio, running, biking, walking at the core. Like that's the core of everything in exercise routines. And I disagree. I think we need to be doing appropriate and strategic exercise. And what I mean by that is strength training, not bodybuilding, I'm talking about strength training. I'm talking about gains in strength. That doesn't necessarily mean we are having huge body composition changes uh, with muscles. We are simply getting stronger. So walking is awesome. It does a lot of good things for weight loss, but it doesn't actually build muscle. There isn't a lot of cardio that builds muscle. People want to argue with me about that. I'm not going to argue about it. People came in on my post the other day and they're like, I swim and I bicycle. Okay, that's cool. That's nice and all, but that's not building you any muscle anywhere. If you're a sprinter, maybe if you're sprinting and you got some thighs and a booty on you, then you're building muscle. But otherwise, you're really just, I don't know. I'm not a big fan. I know there's some cardiovascular benefit, but it's not nearly what the, it's, they painted it to be. So my advice is to start with strength training. Hire somebody to help you get their when you get there, it's a journey. It's not a destination. A little bit, 1% better each day, right? That's my motto. So, okay. And then let's talk about your orthopedic health. Let's talk about aging for a minute. Your joints, your the inside of your joints, your bones, the outside of your joints, your tendons and ligaments, and your muscles are all BFFs. So your joints, your bones, and your ligaments are best friends. They're a triad and they work together. They talk together. They function together. They chemically and hormonally orchestrate together. They become inflamed together and they break down together. The crux of all this is in the musculature. Your muscles are actually endocrine organs, if you will, to a large degree. They secrete all kinds of chemicals that have an effect on our immune system, on our metabolic health, on our hormonal milieu, uh, you name it. They secrete something called myokines, which are cytokines are inflammatory and myokines are anti-inflammatory, but they're the same molecule, just where they come from matters. If it came from your fat, then it's going to be super inflammatory. And if it came from your muscle, it's going to be anti-inflammatory. So you're building an actual suit of armor that's protecting and bolstering your immune system appropriately, balancing your immune system for those of you autoimmunes that always want to argue with me and say, I can't because I have Hashimoto's. Yes, you freaking can't. Join the club. I have Hashimoto's too. whoop de doo <laughs> I have adrenal fatigue too. Let's go, right? We do what we can. So, and you hire someone to help you figure out what that is. I'm not going to tell you. You. I don't know. I used to do like five reps of an exercise and I had to lay down for five minutes and suck on my rock salt. You know, that's how I got through my workout. And then I'd stand up and do another set. So you do whatever you got to do. That's why we hire someone to help us program our workouts and we don't go full bore. I'm not talking CrossFit guys. I'm talking about lifting heavy shit. And that heavy is different for everyone. That's another common question I get. How much are you lifting there? What does it matter? It has nothing to do with you. What I'm lifting has nothing to do with you. This is not a competition. I do not give a shit how much you are or are not lifting. And I don't give a shit how much I am or am not lifting. I'm doing this for me. And I'm working through what I need to work through based on my programming by my coach. I'm lifting what has been deemed safe and appropriate for me during that particular week. So there's no starting point. I can't tell you like go buy this size kilo or pound kettlebell and start there because you might not have any strength to speak of whatsoever. Your tendons and ligaments might be completely deconditioned and totally unaccustomed to doing such things. And so you're going to tear something, right? Or maybe you're super strong and fit and you need to start at a much higher weight because you have great body control. You know how to really harness the tension throughout your body and you've got a great skill set already developed. I don't know. I don't give advice on what kettlebell size to use. And I don't really care what 
amount of weight people are lifting as long as they're going for progressive overload. Progressive overload is where you lift and you lift progressively heavier weights as time goes on. And that time, I don't even know what that looks like. If you have severe adrenal fatigue or you've got long COVID or you've got, you know, myriad of other conditions, maybe mold illness or Lyme, that might take you months to get somewhere that it took someone else weeks. So this is why it's so important to have somebody on your team who really understands what you're going through and can help you get where you need to go. So we want to take care of our orthopedic system. We want to improve our metabolism. Muscle eats fat and it has an afterburn. When you do an hour of cardio, you only get the benefit for that hour. When you do an hour of strength training, the muscle burn that occurs, the metabolic rev up of that muscle gives you hours and hours and hours and hours of what I call afterburn. It modulates your immune function. It reduces pain. It lowers your blood pressure. It improves your cardiovascular health. A lot of this, I think, has to do with the restructuring of your water. But that's a go listen to my episode with Dr. Stephen Hussey. We talk about structured water and cardiovascular disease. And more importantly, we're increasing resilience which that could be physical resilience, which is so important. You know, I talk about a lot of resilience tips and tricks. I have a whole private membership portal called Resiliency University. I invite you to check out. I'll put the link in the show notes. Please check it out. It's a phenomenal portal inside. We've got gads and gads and gads of educational materials, exercises, interviews, you name it. Lots of ask me anything calls where folks join me live and ask me questions and I answer them. But it also, strength training also builds mental resilience. And I think we are sorely lacking mental resilience in this country and in this world. But we are, (laughs) I saw a meme the other day that said, my generation ran into mosh pits for fun and your generation needs safe spaces. We are not the same. And I will leave it at that because that entirely sums up how I feel about everything. So we need the mental and physical resilience and more importantly, in the face of COVID or any upper respiratory virus, which are all wasting diseases, by the way, you guys have heard me talk about that. They're inflammatory and wasting by nature. So going into them, we want to have a slab of muscle on our body. And I made a post recently on Instagram that said, you know, you can't balance your hormones, help your immune system, balance your autoimmune disease and balance your metabolism without adequate muscle mass. And I stand by that. I am so sick of watching influencers go, oh, here's your hormone balancing salad and here's your hormone balancing supplements. I mean, granted, I sell a supplement on my store called Bitch Be Gone. It's an awesome supplement for women of all ages to really help harmonize their hormones. But I make no mistake, I don't promise you're gonna balance anything. If you don't have muscle on your body and you're not sleeping and you're not eating enough protein and you're not mitigating your stress and you're not getting sunlight, you're not gonna balance shit right? I mean, I'm sorry to be so frank, but like, it's just crazy talk to me what I see out there being sold and propagated around without addressing the basics, without a balanced metabolism, there's will never be balanced hormones. You can take all the supplements in the world. Let's talk about wasting for a minute again. So the there's a phenomenon and you've seen this in your prime rib, there's marbling of the muscle that occurs. And as we age and as this inflammation takes hold, we start to get fatty infiltrate. And as our metabolisms get busted, which is like I said, 94% of Americans, we start to get fatty infiltrate into our muscles. And as the fatty infiltrate gets into the muscles, it becomes less responsive. And so the muscle itself doesn't perform nearly as well as it should, it doesn't catch you in time, if you will. This is highly marbled muscle, especially when someone's got severe lack of muscle. So think of a skinny little elderly folks, highly marbled, lacking sarcopenic bodies break hips and breaking a hip is the kiss of death, period. Ask any doctor who knows two spits about orthopedic medicine and they'll tell you that's the beginning of the end. Scenario one, when you break a hip is you get pneumonia and we don't entirely understand all the mechanisms, but I can speculate. You get pneumonia and you die in the hospital, drowning in your own lungs. Very common. Very, 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 very common. Scenario number two is your risk of mortality or dying goes up like tenfold over the next several years. And more so if you're male, actually, over the next several years, up to a decade if you make it that long. So breaking it, and often the hip doesn't break because of the fall. The hip breaks before the fall, if you can believe that. And so the fall really is the slip. Like the 
fracture happen and the person falls down. And so it's not good. And that, why would a hip fracture without trauma? Because the person's sarcopenic and that sarcopenia, that muscle wasting has led to severe bone wasting. So now we've got osteoporosis on board. And so it goes. Osteoporosis and osteopenia, by the way, listen to my episode with Dr. Sean Baker. Those conditions are, in my opinion, and his metabolic by nature. So your osteoporosis really is your metabolic dysfunction of the bones. It's diabetes of the bones. And your osteoarthritis is diabetes of the joint. And if you don't believe me, go listen to that episode. But where does the metabolic dysfunction start? It starts with the lack of musculature and the marbling of that muscle. So we don't want that. And how do we get out of that? We strength train. Because when we lose muscle, we lose GLUT4 receptors. And as we lose GLUT4 receptors, we lose the ability to uptake blood glucose or sugar in our blood. That's coming from carbohydrates that we eat. People, as they age, start to eat more carbohydrates, right? They tend to eat less protein. This can be because they're on a fixed income. This can be because they have dental issues or dentition problems. This can be because their stomach acid in their stomach is starting to decline severely and they're having a harder time digesting protein. But it, however you cut it, maybe it's because they're living alone because their spouse has died and they're not preparing meals for two people anymore. There's lots of reasons, socioeconomic, you name it, physical, but... The bottom line is, is as we age, we actually need more protein and it's harder for our bodies to synthesize protein into skeletal muscle, the protein that we eat into skeletal muscle as we age. So they actually, that's like a catch 22, isn't it? And for those of you like myself who have a hard time eating enough, it's really an uphill battle. So like I am stuffing my face with protein and lifting weights just to maintain what I've got. And that's where it's at. And it's okay. I do love lifting the weights though. It's super fun. So we don't want marbled muscle because we don't want osteoporosis and we don't want the sarcopenia that comes with the muscle wasting and the marbling. And we don't want the unresponsive muscle that loses its ability to fast twitch and you fall down and break a hip or your hip breaks because you're so osteoporotic and then you fall down and that is the beginning of the end. And I'm sorry to be so bleak, but that's really, that's reality and that's where we're at in America. Okay. Some other reasons that I think that strength training is a non-negotiable. I mentioned hormones. I mentioned metabolism. I mentioned immune system function. That's a big one right now, right? And I mentioned your musculoskeletal system in general and how it needs to be worked. I mentioned briefly hormones. So muscle secretes potent hormones, which regulates your insulin metabolism, helping to balance your blood sugar and stimulates protein synthesis, which I just talked about, aiding you in building more muscle. It puts those GLUT4 receptors up so that you can suck up the blood glucose so you don't become so insulin resistant and metabolically dysfunctional. It also helps stoke and regenerate and build more new mitochondria. This is a big one. Mitochondria is desperately... Um, busted. <laughs> I don't have a better way to put it. Most humans at this point, we live in such a toxic soup. We've been exposed to so many medications and toxicity and lack of good nutrition because our soils are depleted, blah, 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 blah. Monsanto, glyphosate, all that. Our mitochondria are busted. And so having the ability to regenerate our mitochondria and to build more mitochondria comes largely, in my opinion, from strength training and adding more muscle to your frame. So if nothing else, we want to have good, healthy, functioning mitochondria as best we can. I poisoned the heck out of myself with Cipro back when I was a young person and they handed it out like candy to college students. But, um, you know, we do what we can. So the other benefit of strength training and all exercise for that matter is BDNF, uh, better known as brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This is a molecule that protects your brain and helps them regenerate. So we want to have all the BDNF that we can. Muscle also increases production from your other hormonal systems of the body of testosterone, human growth hormone, and cortisol. It's also a major target of thyroid hormone signaling. In fact, well-trained skeletal muscle helps convert T4 into active form T3. So a lot of people, you hear about thyroid resistance or T3, low T3, blah, blah, blah. If you're into the thyroid world, you've heard about all these things. Now, what those people never talk about, these supposed thyroid experts never talk about, not all of them. Dr. Carolyn Stone was on my podcast and we talked all about it. So we'll link that episode as well. But if you're in the hypothyroid club like myself, let's put it this way, 
about 90% of women that I've seen clinically over the age of 40 have some level of low thyroid function. And of those women, about 90% have autoimmune induced Hashimoto's low thyroid function. So if you're in the hypothyroid club, like I am, and the Hashimoto's club like I am, then strength training is the secret weapon here because it helps us convert T4 into T3. For those of you taking Synthroid or levothyroxine, you're gonna want healthy scuttle muscle to convert that into active T3. Okay, and then it's got a potent anti-aging mechanism through everything I just mentioned, basically. That's how we stay looking younger, longer, and functioning younger, longer, and feeling younger, longer, because our metabolism is working, our hormones are hopefully working much better than if we were not strength training, our joints are doing a better job, everything's metabolically active, the BDNF is helping the brain, we're going to bed on time because we're tired, because we exercise, we're drinking enough water, we're eating enough meat, all of these things lead to really beautiful, healthy skeletal muscle, which leads to a very potent anti-aging mechanism, including that mitochondrial stoking. So that's it. That's my rationale and argument for why strength training is non-negotiable. I hope this is helpful. Go back and check out these other podcast episodes that are from the Dr. Tina show that I've linked here in the show notes. Go ahead over to my store. There's a couple supplements I want to recommend over there if you're in the strength training realm. I prefer beef. <laughs> if you people always say like what's your favorite, you know, post workout, blah blah blah, beef. That's it. But if you're like me, sometimes we got to supplement some protein. I have an awesome protein powder over there called Post Lift Whey that I absolutely love. If you use Dr. Tina Show 10, it'll get you 10% off. Another supplement I love over there is called Libido Vitality. It's a blend of supplement or I'm sorry, herbs that have a potent effect on helping stoke your androgens, which are so critical when it comes to getting that anabolic effect that we so desperately need and start to lose as we age. The other product there is Bitch Be Gone, which is a nice hormonal balance product that I think is beautiful. And then if you're having some orthopedic issues, I've got two products. I've got Beauty in a Bottle, which yes, it's for beauty but it's also phenomenal for joints. And I've got a product called Daily Collagen. And so I will leave those as suggestions on your weightlifting journey, on your strength training journey. And I will leave you with that. If you like this show, please do me a huge favor and head over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player, Spotify, wherever it is, rate, review, and subscribe. It really helps me out and it allows others to notice that the show exists and it gets others on board. So hopefully we can spread this message far and wide. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to The Dr. Tina Show. Please be sure to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Tina, that's D-R-T-Y-N-A and Dr. Tina 2.0, as well as visit my website at drtina.com. This is a Resonant Media production produced by Drake Peterson and mixed by Chris McCone. The theme song is by John the Guilt. As always, you can email the show at podcast at drtina.com. And if you like this episode, please rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. See you next week. This podcast is for general informational purposes only. It does not constitute the practices of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. I am a doctor, but I am not your doctor. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is intended not to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.